Hey, how you doing? Today, I'm gonna to show you set-based logic versus row-based logic, and when to use a while loop, and when you shouldn't. And today, we're gonna to use Stack Overflow 2013, and we're gonna use the comments table as an example. And I'm gonna show you how many rows we've got, because we're gonna update the score value in our example. So let's run this. And we can see we're gonna update row number one, where score, where score equals one. So awful lot of rows in there. We've got 2.4 million rows, I think. Yeah, 2.493 million rows. And usually if you had a maybe a support call or someone asked you to update all those rows to equal one, 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 you'd normally get a query. A lot of people would write the query like this. There's a few problems with this. The way SQL Server handles this is it will take all of these rows in one go and try to update them. And there's a few problems with that. Now, I've run this query a few times and I can run it now and you'll see it won't complete. You can see down here, we've got an index on score. So that's all indexed. We can still see, I mean, I was still running after 10 minutes. I stopped the query. Um, in a production environment or in any environment, you're gonna risk blowing the transaction log. Um, a severe problem, risk of blocking. Other people can't use that comments table while this has been updated. And it's long duration, which we don't really want in any circumstances. So let's stop this query and let's have a look at how we'd use a while loop. Now, what a while loop does is it will update all the rows you want it to do. It's only gonna do them in a set amount of rows at a time. So we know we've got this many rows. So what this little script here does, it's gonna declare a variable called top in this case, and that's gonna tell us how many rows we wanna update in one go. I could set this to 10, I could set this to 10,000. Realistically, 5,000 is quite a nice value I find personally. Um, but I'm gonna set it to 1,000 this time. We're gonna declare a variable called counter and that tells us what number our loop, our while loop is at. So we want it to be above zero. That means there's still rows to update. And then after that, I'm gonna create a temp table and that's gonna store the thousand rows I want to update. So if we scroll down a bit further, the script's gonna start and it says, if my counter is greater than one, which it is, then just insert my top thousand rows, because the variable set to a thousand where my score is one so it's going to it's just going to insert a thousand of these to start off with so if we can see the speed of this it's really quick so let's just change that quickly really really quick um so it's going to just update it's going to insert a thousand rows into there then it's just gonna update those thousand rows. So it's gonna say well, what scores, what values have you got in the score values table? We've clustered this, so it's ordered, nice and efficient. We know we've, we're have we gonna update score, we know we're indexed there, and the comments table, the ID column, that's the important bit. If you want this to be quick, we've gotta know that this column here is indexed, because if it isn't, we're gonna be searching, we're gonna be scanning through all of these rows the, to find which values we want. But we've got a primary key on there, as you can see here. So that's gonna be nice and quick as well. And this is where the magic happens. Once that's updated, it's gonna set the counter to what it's just updated. So in this case, it's gonna set it to a thousand. So when it comes back round up here, it's gonna say, well, yeah, my counter value is higher than zero. And so the only time that's ever gonna, the, the loop's gonna stop when there's no more rows to update because it's gonna say, right, the number of rows I've updated is zero and that's when the loop will stop. So that's quintessential to any while loop. You need to update that value so the loop knows when to stop because I've tried it years and years ago. If you don't get it in there, you end up stuck in an infinite loop and it's not pretty. Anyway. Once we've updated these rows, we wanna clear the values out of our score values table because 
we want the next next amount of values in there, the next thousand rows where our score is one. So we're going to truncate that, we're going to clear it down. And I had a print counter in there to show that it's running. I find that helpful because it shows me my progress. Probably and arguably the most efficient ways to do a raise error. Um, it's a bit more efficient than using print. But um, so, so going back to this, we know it's going to take over 10 minutes. We know it's still running. We've seen it running for 30 seconds. If we run this, can look at the messages tab here. Not much is going to appear. Then it's going to fire thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of rows at a time. We can do that. Um, I've actually got implicit transactions on, so what I'll do is I'll commit that and then I'll turn this off. And we can see what's the value like at 10,000. Is that, is that more efficient? Is that quicker? It takes a little bit more time to grab these values here. It's going to take a little bit more time to update them. And the question is, is it quicker to update 10,000 rows or is it quicker to update 1,000 rows 10 times? So I'll pause the video there and we can see to do 10,000 rows takes around this amount of time, one minute, but then obviously we're firing out. It's probably quicker in this case to set it to 10,000. We can see the rows are updating really nicely there. Far more efficient than doing it this way. Now there are times and a place to use a while loop. This is one of those cases where you have to update so many rows, it's worth just doing them thousands of times, but a small amount. It's more efficient, it reduces blocking, and it's happier for SQL Server. If you've got any questions, hit me in the comments, and I'm happy to get back to you or try any other examples that you might have.